Hello, Wade Explorers. Thanks for joining us again and welcome back to another exciting and informative video on our YouTube channel. If you are joining us for the first time, we want to thank you for watching. In this episode, I will be looking at the expansion of BRICS to a level nation while it will strengthen the shift to a multipolar order and also challenge Western dominance. I will dive into the reason why the five BRICS nations have invited six others to join the forum and I will explore why the groupings has 3.7 billion people and 36% of the world's economic output. I shall also look at the major differences among the nations why this will limit their geopolitical affairs. I will discuss more details, analytical information, illustrate to you as to the reason why building a bigger BRICS is here to stay. So I will encourage you to watch this video to the end for clarity and better understanding. So without any more delay, let's just dive straight into it. The recent BRICS summit in Johannesburg confirmed the transition to a multipolar order where despite the salience of the United States and China, median powers and regional alignments are also influential. If you look at different aspects, BRICS was first conceived in 2011. Goldman Sachs Global Investment Research Division Prospect Report Team Building Better Global Economic BRICS, according to which the emerging economies of Brazil, Russia, India and China were seen as shaping the future of the world's economic as drivers of growth. The group was formally founded in 2009 in Russian city of Yakaterinsburg as a forum where those four countries could cooperate and also meet on mutual interest. South Africa, Africa's regional economic giant, joined BRICS in 2010. Moving ahead, more than two decades after the report, the economies of Russia and Brazil had their difficulties, but those countries remain important actors. China has become a superpower, and it's now clear that one of the fundamentals and also foundational moments of the current world order was Beijing's accessions to the World Trade Organizations in 2001. Following a long and cautious economic openings, India, in turn, which will likely have the world's fastest growing major economics in 2023, based on figures, is well positioned to become another superpower. In March of 2023, BRICS overtook the G7 in terms of its share of world's gross domestic product, the GDP, measured by purchasing power and parity. If you look at BRICS, if you consider as a wall of BRICS so many to point out, under the team, BRICS and Africa, Partnership for Mutually Accelerated Growth, Sustainable Development and also Inclusivity and Multilateralism. The 15 BRICS Summit exposed one important trend and delivers one important result. First, in the idea that the world order is changing and that BRICS countries are increasingly their leverage within it. Second, in the invitation to Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates to join the group on January 1st, 2024, bringing the number of nations involved to 11. The appeal of their informed cooperation is undeniable. Before the summit, 40 countries had expressed interest in joining the group and more than 20 had formally applied. There were, however, differences within the groups regarding alignment. While China and Russia were enthusiastic, India and Brazil were more reluctant. The final groups of countries selected to join BRICS was a product of negotiations among the five members. Four of their six new members are situated in the Middle East and North Africa, looking at the MENA region, a region that was not previously represented. Two of them, Iran and Saudi Arabia, are long-standing rivals. In March, Tehran and Riyadh reached a deal to restore relations brokered by China, Algeria and Turkey two middle powers that had expressed a strong desire to join BRICS were left out. Moving forward, with the Six Nations members, BRICS accounts for a population of over 3.7 billion, almost half of the world's population, and 36% of the global economic output. Moreover, the group will represent a huge portion of the world's mining and energy reserves, production and consumption, including nearly half of the global's oil reserves and 42% of world's oil supply. If you look at the trends, at the geopolitical activities, abstaining from the West but not universal values, 
BRICS also comes with regards to its own interest. The BRICS countries have abstained from joining the West in imposing sanctions against Russia and from explicitly condemning the invasion of Ukraine. At the end of August 22nd, 24th summit in Johannesburg, BRICS members expressed their support for Russia as the country assumes the chairmanship of the organizations, with the 16th summit scheduled to take place in Kazan on October 2024. This non-alignment of the rest with the West may be a threat to the current international liberal order. However, while the international liberal orders may be in a decline, the appeal for BRICS is more a symptom than the root causes. The group embodies the current period in which competition and sometimes conflict among countries and blocs are more than driving force of international systems. As shown in Johannesburg's second declaration, those countries seek to counter Western hegemony by invoking the very ideas of universalism produced by the liberal international order itself, calling for the promotion of peace, a fairer international order, sustainable development, justice and equalism, human rights and fundamental freedoms for all and inclusive growth. This strategy makes it difficult to formulate an alternative discourse and evidenced by the failures of initiatives such as the United States-led Summit for Democracy. Instead of citing the principle of sovereignty, BRICS countries refer to the necessity of protecting human rights in a non-selective manner, non-polarized aspect, constructive manner and also without double standards, and call for the respect of democracy and human rights, which should be implemented on the level of global governance as well as national level. Considering the diversity of members, cultural backgrounds and also regimes, including authoritarian regimes where some human rights are disregarded, it becomes difficult to discuss the meaning of those lofty concepts and how those might be implemented at the global context. If you look at other areas, the New Development Bank, formerly known as BRICS Development Bank, is another sign not only of a return of economic competition but of the transformation of the liberal international order itself. The global financial architecture that emerges was based on the principle of free trade, market economic and liberalization of privatized aspect. As this points out, however, those values are being suppleted by expansionist policies, regulations and intervention. The New Development Bank is a financing alternative that lets in Chinese Yuan and also has announced that it will now also use the Brazilian and South African currencies. Looking forward, if you consider the multiple interests at stake with regards to the geopolitics and also transformation in the global order, international organization, either formal or informal, depends on the resource, power and also the will of those member states. However, why group seeks to increase the representation of emerging markets and developing economies in international organization claims that BRICS represents the rest coming together against the West as simplicity, not least because BRICS and the new wall of BRICS, which emerged after the last summit, are a very heterogeneous group. If you look at other areas, China, the main challenger of American power, plays a leading role. Beijing sees global regional organizations like the United Nations or the Shanghai Corporation Organization as arenas where it can expand and consolidate its vision for the international order through both generalist ideas such as its own concept of development or human rights and concrete initiatives such as the Belt and Road Initiatives. If you look at other areas, for Russia, BRICS is a platform for mitigating the effects of isolationism, including sanctions and establishing alternative diplomatic ties and trade networks and for South Africa which competes in Africa the groups provide easier access to global and also regional power in so-called global south as well as a platform to lobby for interests of Pretoria and of the African continent in international forums looking ahead India and Brazil in return are less willing to challenge the United States of America and European Union for them BRICS represent an additional cooperation platforms and does not replace cooperation with Washington or Brussels, as evidenced by the recent accord established between New Delhi and Washington, or by the declaration of Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva stating that BRICS will not and should not be a counterweight to the G7, the G20, or the United States of America. There are, however, of course, tensions within the group. India and China are long-standing 
rivals and engaging in disputes such as the standoff along the borders in the Himalayas. India has no interest in a BRICS or a world dominance by China. If you look at the scenario, if I paint that to you, the extent to which the new configuration of BRICS will influence international order will be determined by the combination of factors. One of them is the evolution of the United States-China relations, which will depend to a large extent in the Taiwan issue. For Beijing, the one-China principle remains non-negotiable. If tensions around the status of Taiwan increases, and if Washington strengthened his support to Taipei, China would likely use its dominant position within BRICS to aggressively counter American influence. In this case, members like India, Argentina or Ethiopia will be forced or will be faced to tougher choices with regards to their position. Another important factor is the actual ability of the organizations to reach and implementing decisions in diplomatic, economic and security fields. Formal or informal international organizations can expand through increasing their goals and also areas of activity, their competencies or numbers of member states. BRICS is a platform for interstate cooperation and its resolution depends on consensus. As it grows from 5 to 11 members, its resources increase, but so does the difficulties in readiness and consensus. And for the foreseeable future, persistent negotiations among various regional and also state interests is expected to prevail, rather than any Cold War 2.2 logic that aligns a unit breaks against the West. If you look at other areas as we close down this episode, however, as Western economics experience demographic decline and economic stagnation breaks by integrating some of the world's top emerging economies and demographic heavyweights will also offer more potential in terms of economic growth. Nevertheless, concerns about the de-dollarization of the world economics may be, if not greatly exacerbated or exaggerated, premature. If you look at other areas, the dollar is expected to remain the primary medium of exchange and unit of account in the coming decades, and BRICS members, including China, while working to reduce their dependency, are not interested in an accelerated process of de-dollarization. Moreover, since its creation in 2014, BRICS New Development Bank has disbursed around 33 billion US dollars in loan, which is far less than the World Bank committed to disburse as of 2022 alone. However, BRICS may become the key forum for negotiation in areas like energy and other areas. Increasingly, although it is integrated, some of the world's most carbon-intensive economies climate change, trade and also emerging aspect of energy do not seem to be priorities. Judging the official declaration made through the recent summit, maybe members and instead expect to push for the reform of international institutions, namely the United Nations Security Council and other organizations. Ultimately, the great advantage of BRICS is the growth potential of some of its economies and also its flexibility and structure. However, Despite changes, BRICS has come to stay. We all shall be looking at what happens with regards to geopolitics and also more importantly, the new world order and transformation and why building a bigger BRICS has come to stay. We want to thank you for watching. If you are new to our channel, we encourage you to check some of our informative videos on this YouTube channel and support the channel. We're looking forward to meeting you soon in our next episode. Have a good day. Bye-bye.